thousands of kilometers above the Earth's surface, hundreds of satellites are providing information to decision makers, informing how we manage mineral exploration, farming practices, and environmental protection. In fact, there are at least 60 current Earth observation programs in federal and state governments, estimated to be worth approximately $950 million. CSIRO researchers recently teamed up with fellow scientists from Japan, China, Israel and France to head into the outback to make sure the information coming from those satellites is accurate. It's a process called vicarious calibration. In Australia, we, we are a huge consumer of Earth observation data for all sorts of things from mineral, mineral uh, exploration to environment. Uh, uh, and so knowing that the data is well calibrated then ensures that the downstream product is, is a good product. And how is this information calibrated? Using a spectrometer like this one, the team can take on-ground measurements of surface reflection at the same time as a satellite does an overpass to take the same measurement. The two sets of data are then compared. Another challenge for researchers who rely on satellite data is finding a suitable location to take such measurements. So we use targets such as this, which is Lake Lafroy, a big salt lake, which uh, is actually a um, uh, considered a uniform target, uh, uniform in terms of um, flat spectrally as well as uh, uniform uh, composition. So it's a big expanse of Salt Lake uh, and it's a bright reflectance target. But the problem with this Western Australian target is that it's a long way from any major urban centre. Q Rover. CSIRO scientists have developed a prototype to see if they can automate the process of vicarious calibration. Uh, so this vehicle could uh, potentially be operating here alone and then the scientists that are interested in the data uh, could be in their home countries uh, in real time looking at the data that is being collected and then suggesting for example changes. You know, I need a robot to go back there or there was this signature here which is interesting, we need to do a more detailed analysis here. As well as ensuring the accuracy of the current suite of spaceborne sensors, the information collected on this mission will also be used for future satellites. The next generation will be using hyperspectral images, essentially collecting higher spectral resolution imagery, collecting important information such as dry woody plant materials and specific mineralogical information that is not available with the current satellites. Hyperspectral imagery is often used by the mining industry for exploring for mineral deposits. Uh, we have the ability to look for minerals from uh, airborne imagery or spaceborne imagery and that it gives it indications of whereabouts we can explore for exp uh, finding targets. A lot of uh, money is spent in exploration on drilling and uh, it's very expensive to put holes in the ground. So if we can improve the targeting of those drill holes by looking for middle deposits using remote sensing techniques where we can cover a large area, that can really be a benefit to the mining industry. You will be able to actually monitor soil pollution, soil activity, and also help farmers to uh, you know, fertilize the soil according to the exact amount of fertilizers, not to put uh, more and waste money and not to put less and then reduce the, uh, the uh, productivity of the soil. Australia doesn't have any of its own satellites, but relies on international collaborations like this for Earth observation data. Our collaboration with international satellite providers and the Australian government agencies like Geoscience Australia helps to ensure more accurate data leading to efficient, productive and profitable mining and agricultural industries.